This Mass comes to you from the Carmelite Monastery in Ganelabar, New South Wales. In accordance with state government guidelines, our choral music is pre-recorded from previous Masses. For more information, please visit flowerofcarmel.com. All our music is in the public domain used under one licence, or our original works of the Diocese of Lismore. If you have a prayer intention, please visit our Facebook page or contact us at lismorediocese.org. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. I can say I think that here in Australia, our prayers have been answered. Um, we're moving quite well against COVID-19, and I exhort you to continue in your prayers, because prayers are very powerful if we are persistent. Let's acknowledge our failings and turn to God. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. Christ have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing to my friend the song of his love for his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted choice vines in it. In the middle, he built a tower. 
he dug a press there too. He expected it to yield grapes, but sour grapes were all that it gave. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, I ask you to judge between my vineyard and me. What could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? I expected it to yield grapes. Why did it yield sour grapes instead? Very well, I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge for it to be grazed on and knock down its wall for it to be trampled on. I will lay it waste, unpruned, undug, overgrown by the briar and the thorn. I will command the clouds to rain no rain on it. Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah that chosen plant. He expected justice, but found bloodshed, integrity, but only a cry of distress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The response is, The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. It stretched out its branches to the sea. To the great river, it stretched out its shoots. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving. And that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, Fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honour, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things that you have learnt from me and have been taught by me and have heard or seen that I do, then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Mm. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Mm. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Listen to another parable. There was a man, a landholder, who planted a vineyard, he fenced around it, dug a wine press in, and built a tower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went abroad. When the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, 
and stoned the third. Next he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally he said to his son, They will respect my son, he said, but when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come on, let us kill him and take over the inheritance. So they seized him and drew him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, he will do to those tenants. He answered, He will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to another tenant who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? It was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to the people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some years ago, I was elected um, Provincial Superior of the Discalced Carmelites. And in this three-year term, as we call them, triennia, they elected as the second in charge someone that found me difficult and who I at times also found difficult. And so it began that three-year period with a challenge because we had to work together. Towards the end of that three years, I truly liked the man, but we, we kind of worked well together but we worked well together because I had to change the way in which I worked to fit in with the man that had been elected to be my main supporter and advisor. And by the end of my term, I said to him, and I will still say to him again to this very day, you are the best second in charge that I've ever had worked brilliantly and yet if I was to have chosen who I would have had as what we call my first counsellor I wouldn't have chosen this man because there was a certain tension between us and that period of time was truly a gift of God because I began to see things in that man that I hadn't seen I grew to like him and I had to find new ways of governing and doing things in such a way that I was able to say to him, as I said, you're the best first counsellor that I ever had. Today's gospel begins as something quite difficult. It's about a tenant and the, and the people that are sent to collect the produce, at the end of which the son is killed. And we all know what that, that is because we know the story of the, of the gospels. That's almost a quasi-reference to himself because he, in fact, is sent away and killed. But it's not fundamentally a rebuke, as it could be read, of the scribes and Pharisees. Because if it was simply that, something has gone wrong, because Jesus hasn't given these people a way out. He hasn't given them something to learn. All it is is simply a rebuke of the highest sort. And that's not the kind of thing Jesus does. We must read on to understand. It was the stone rejected by the builders that has become the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it's wonderful to see. What's Jesus really saying to these people? First of all, he's saying, you have rejected me. Why have you rejected me? Quite obviously, because I am not the Messiah that you expected. I am not the leader that you were wanting and were hoping for. But that's only the stepping stone into what he's saying. 
but it was the stone rejected by the builders that becomes the keystone. You have rejected me, he's saying, but I am the keystone. Let's go back to the, to the way this works out in our own lives. We have expectations of other people. And when people don't measure up to our expectations, our tendency is to reject them. You're not good enough. You're not what I expect. And this is exactly what happened to Jesus. We know that. And he's telling them that too. But he's saying to them, you must change because of me. You must change. You must adapt because of the one that has been given to you. As happened in that term with me. We don't choose who we have as, as our advisors. Our advisors in the Carmelites are elected for us by our brothers or our sisters. And in that sense, we believe that all of this is the work of God. And the first thing that Jesus is saying, this is the work of God. You may reject me, but I'm telling you that the way forward is for you to adapt to who I am. I suppose he's also saying in terms of the metaphor, if you pick the keystone that you want on which to ground the building, it probably won't work because you're going to pick a keystone that, which fits very smoothly into who you are and that won't work. The keystone is the one that demands all the other stones to fit the keystone. But what kind of fitting is it? There are two ways in which we can be called to fit in with Jesus Christ. One is through a total transformation or change of who we are. And I don't believe that that's what this gospel is asking. The second is, as it were, to imagine ourselves as the builder and to gather all the stones and reconfigure the stones so as to fit around the keystone. And that, I think, is what Jesus is challenging the Pharisees and in that challenging us to do. Jesus does not fit my life because if he did, I'm already perfect. But Jesus comes and he is not what I expect. He doesn't ask of me what I want to be asked to do, but he comes and challenges. I don't have to, at this point, change so radically as to be transformed, but I must reconfigure my whole life around him. And that is the simple thing which is being asked of the Pharisees, and I believe being asked of all of us. Because the amazing thing is, this is God's doing, and it's a wonder to see. What's the wonder to see? The cornerstone? No. The wonder is to see yourself reconfiguring your life, reconfiguring the way you think, reconfiguring what you think is important, and allowing Jesus to determine that. And that means every piece of your life, to use another image which he could have presented here, it's as if the whole building, the whole edifice that had been put in place by the Pharisees falls to the ground because it doesn't fit the keystone. And now every stone must be picked up and fitted around that keystone. And that remains one of the fundamental challenges for every follower of Jesus. Following him was never my choice. Following him was his choice of me to follow him. And I must now pick up all the pieces of my life, let them fall to the ground, and then fit them around him. The challenge for today's gospel is for each of us to configure ourselves around Jesus Christ rather than asking him to fit us.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We worry about many things in this life. St. Paul tells us that there's no need to worry, but that we should ask God with prayer and thanksgiving for what we need. For the Church of God, that the beloved vineyard of the Lord may produce its fruit for God's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women whose lives have been cut short while performing their duty as police officers, and for peacemakers, that their efforts will bring real peace in families, in countries, and between nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose hopes in life have been dashed by the COVID pandemic, that the support of family, friends, and the community will help them make a fresh start. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of Saint Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives, benefactors and friends, that they may receive the kingdom prepared for them, especially John Hancock, John Holdsworth, Edward Ted Glossop, Bernie Mackney, Patricia McQuaid, Martin O'Connor and Lyndall Pavey. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us in this time of pandemic continue to pray for our own Diocese of Lismore that God may grant us his protection. Let us also pray for those who have died of COVID-19, for the rapid healing of those who have contracted the virus, for the strengthening and support of those who are working at, on the coalface, fighting against the virus, and for all of us who are struggling in difficult times, that we might find God in our present moment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices initiated by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it, is right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and <coughs> profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but but deliver deliver us from from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. Amen. And let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we have consumed through Christ our Lord. Amen. I know that many people are getting tired of this thing called COVID. At the moment, it's not going away fully. And in some parts of the world, it seems to be coming back I simply want to share something from our Holy Mother, Saint Teresa, and that's simply her realization that things take time. We live within time. And the one thing necessary as we undergo the effluxion of time is patience. 
And she says, patience endures all things. In fact, patience, she would say, is what we need at the moment. And if we have the patience to continue on the path that we're on, we will find eventually that it will have passed and our patience will be rewarded. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, I continue to pray, to pray for your blessing and protection on the people of the Diocese of Lismore. But at today's Mass, for all those who attend this online, I pray that you give them your protection, you protect those that they love, and protect those for whom they pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Pope Francis calls all Catholics to celebrate the way in which people with disability contribute uniquely to the common good. You know, we call them landmine survivors. He's more than a survivor. Yes, he's, he's a person, a full person. Ten years ago, Chen's life was very different. He enjoyed going to school, helping his family out on the farm, and playing soccer with his friends. At just 16 years old, everything changed when Chen stepped on a landmine that took both of his legs. Immediately at the time of the accident, it was difficult to accept. I used to be able to walk normally. As he recovered, Chen began to believe he would be a burden to his family, who were already struggling financially. Limited to the confines of his family home, bordered by a strong river, Chen fell to his lowest point. When hope seemed lost, he was found by Bishop Kike Figueredo and the team at the Arupe Center in Batambong. A model of the Cambodian Church's mission to people with disability, the centre aims to provide support through education, career outcomes and social development to young people affected by landmines, birth defects or illnesses such as cancer and polio. As an expression of God's love, the Arupe Centre is there for those who might otherwise be forgotten. Where uh, giving back uh, dignity to, to these children. No? When we give back the vision of dignity to them, is that God is, is, is with them. We are respecting God's presence. No? And for me, it's very important. Now 26 years old, Chen has enjoyed academic and professional success. He has completed high school and is studying IT programming at university. 
while working full-time in the La Paloma Textile Centre, a church-run social enterprise. The centre offers men and women with disability a place of gainful employment. The Arupe Centre's outreach program provides families like Chen's with resources such as food, microloans, scholarships for siblings and repairs to the home. I am proud and joyful that the organisation has taken my child and given him education and training so that he can work in the future. Thanks to the Arupe Centre, Chen and many other young people have found hope and made a new start. However, without your support, the Centre cannot continue its mission to care for the forgotten ones in Cambodia. Using the appeal envelope provided, we invite you to become a part of this mission as a monthly partner today and help strengthen and empower people like Chen. From $20 per month, you can support church-run mission programs like the Arupe Center as they develop opportunities for children with disability. Alternatively, you may choose to give a generous one-off gift today which can support our mission work in Cambodia and around the world. The generosity you show today can be the difference in a young person's life tomorrow. I have a chance to continue my study and also to work. It's like I have a new life.